guys, welcome back to The Bright Side. Macy here, The Bright Side Girl, and today we're gonna be talking about my not so scary -thon TBR. If you missed it, I will link the announcement video for Not So Scary a Thon, which is my fall and Halloween themed readathon. This year we are doing vampires versus villains, so even if you're not a big Halloween or slightly spooky reader, you can still participate. You can do the villain option, which can include like a lot of retellings or just morally great characters. So be sure and check out that full announcement video for details. Not So Scary a Thon is going to be running Monday, September 23rd through Sunday, October 6th. I have two sets sets of reading challenges, one for the vampires and one for the villains. I'll be attempting to do both sets of reading challenges and be a vampire and a villain. You can pick and choose. You don't have to do any if you don't want to, but we're going to go over the reading challenges now and share my TBR as we go along. So the first reading challenges for vampires is Simple and Easy, a vampire book. So all of the books that I am choosing will work for this category. I'm going to do the vampire challenges where every book for each reading challenge is still going to be a vampire book but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Same thing for the villains. Every book I choose is going to be villain related, but if you don't want to do it that specific, you don't have to. Technically, any of these books will work, but I want to talk about The Immortal Dark by Tigest Gurma. I've made it a readathon goal to read at least one of my special editions per readathon. We actually have two in here. I get special editions now through Fairy Loot once a month and also through Friends and things, and sometimes I have a couple pre-orders. I don't do a lot of that. This one was a Barnes & Noble pre-order that I got for my birthday actually. It said it was a Barnes & Noble exclusive but I believe this edition is also available at Target. So this is a new I believe young adult vampire novel. How freaking pretty is this? So in this one I'll just show you really quickly. It says no soul can enter without an invitation and then really pretty in pages and then it's got a really pretty print on the book itself. So this one is about orphaned heiress Kaiden Aiden who grew up far from the arcane society. She was was born into, where human bloodlines gain power through vampire companionship. When her sister June disappears, Kaiden is convinced a vampire stole her, the very vampire bound to their family, the cruel yet captivating Sasanios Sagad. To find June, Kaiden must infiltrate the elite Uxle University, where she must survive living with Sasanios, even as he does everything he can to drive her away. So, I've heard that this one is very good and very unique. I believe it's a standalone. I could be wrong about that, but I've also heard that it is very very dark and might have some more harder hitting topics, possibly some trigger warnings. Because I haven't read it, I wanted to share that with you guys. That's just kind of what I've been hearing out and about. I try to go into books mostly blind because I just enjoy them more that way. I'm a little bit nervous for this one, but I'm excited to try it. All right, next up is Skeleton on the cover. And I want to apologize because in my head, there were like a ton of vampire books with skeletons on the cover, or at least like skeleton bones or something. And I had the hardest time finding one with a skeleton on the cover that I also owned and that wasn't too long and that I hadn't already read. So if you're struggling with this category, feel free to read a non-vampire book that has a skeleton on the cover because this was tougher than I meant it to be. But I'm going with Vampires Never Get Old, Tales with Fresh Bite. This is a young adult anthology all about vampires and it has some of our favorite authors like Heidi Helig, Julie Murphy, V.E. Schwab, and Rebecca Roan Horse and more. I was going to use this for the last reading challenge, but because this is the only only one that I owned and wanted to read that had a skeleton on the cover, we're going to use it for this category. Just a bunch of different short story vampire tales, and I've been wanting to read this for a while. Next up is Set in a Castle, and for that one I'm choosing Blood Countess by Leda Popovic. It says it's a Lady Slayers novel. I think this is part of a series, I'm not sure if they connect together or if they're companion novels, and I know this is a like retelling backstory on one of Dracula's wives, I believe. So in this one we are following 16 year old Anna Darvish and she has begun working as a scullery maid for Countess Elizabeth Bathory, a woman as enigmatic as she is beautiful. When Elizabeth takes a liking to Anna, she is vaulted to chambermaid status and begins to reside in the Countess's private suite far from the filthy, drafty servants' quarters below. For the ambitious Anna, it's a dream. She receives wages generous enough to provide for her family, and the lonely, calculating Countess, whose cruel husband is often away at war, begins to groom Anna as her friend, confidant, and eventual lover. So I think this is a about one of Dracula's wives. 
I'm not entirely sure, but I know there are vampires in here and I know it's set in a castle. Challenge number four is a red and black book. For that one, I am doing Cruel Illusions by Maggie Fuston. Now, I believe this is the fairy loot edition of the book. Someone sent me this, so I'm not entirely sure. This is what the irregular edition looks like, which is also beautiful if you're looking to find it. Super, super pretty. Definitely red and black. Some of my favorite sprayed edges. This has really pretty in pages and then the Naked book. Also super fun. This one I thought was an Alice in Wonderland retelling. I believe this one is adult. I could be wrong about the retelling part, but I'm pretty sure. And then I found it has vampires, so I was like, this is a must. So ever since a vampire murdered her mother, Eva has been determined to get revenge. Ten years later, having survived foster home after foster home, and without a single sighting of a vampire, Ava has begun to lose hope. That is, until she stumbles across a hidden magic show where she witnesses impossible illusions. The magicians may not be the bloodsuckers she's hunting, but Ava is convinced something supernatural is afoot. I love the concept of like vampires and magic shows and it's supposed to be like gothic and lush and I think this is a standalone. Not entirely sure but we're gonna find out. The last vampire challenge is a spooky short story. Again it doesn't have to be a vampire short story but that's personally what I'm going to do and I'm gonna just basically choose a graphic novel because I'm gonna be reading all the short stories in that anthology. So we're gonna do The Accursed Vampire by Madeline McGrain and this is part of a, just a I think middle grade grade vampire graphic novel. I actually have like a ton of graphic novels that I want to get to but I picked this one up from the library and we're gonna check it out. Next up are the villain challenges. So they're fairly similar to the vampire ones just with a little bit of a twist. So the first one is of course a villain book. All of the books that I have chosen will be villain books but for that one I chose Give the Dark My Love by Beth Revis. This is a duology I've been wanting to get to for so long. So this is a young adult duology. We have 17 year old Nedra who leaves her home in the rural northern territories of Lunar Island to attend the prestigious Yugen Academy with only one goal in mind, master the trade of medicinal alchemy. A scholarship student matriculating with children of Lunar Island's wealthiest and most powerful families, Nedra doesn't quite fit in with the other kids at Yugen. Hopefully I'm saying that right. <laughs> Until she meets Gregory Gray Astor. Gray is immediately taken by the brilliant and stubborn Nedra, who he notices is especially invested in her study. And that's for a good reason. A deadly plague has been sweeping through the north and it's making its way towards the city. With her family's lives and the lives of Lunar Island citizens on the line, Nedra is determined to find a cure for the plague. Gray and Nedra grow close, but as the sickness spreads and the body counts rise, Nedra becomes desperate to find a cure. Soon she finds herself diving into alchemy's most dangerous practices, and when she turns to the most forbidden practice of all, necromancy, even Gray might not be able to pull her from the darkness. So, I think she has kind of a villain origin, or possibly a villain origin story. I feel like it will work for this category, so I snuck it. In. Challenge number two is a weapon on the cover. For that one, I am choosing My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. This is an adult thriller, and all I know about it is that it is a husband and wife. They fell in love, got married, moved to the suburbs, and then they got bored, and they decide to start killing people together. So we got a couple of villains in here. It's supposed to be fast paced and exciting and well written. So I thought that would be a fun one in like a different style as well. Next we have set in a castle again. So for this one, I am choosing assistant to the villain by Hannah Nicole Mayer. I believe this is an adult either duology or trilogy. I've heard kind of mixed reviews, but I'm excited to try it out. So we have assistant wanted. Notorious high ranking villain seeks a loyal level headed assistant for unspecified office duties. Support Supporting staff for random mayhem and terror and other dark things in general. Discretion is a must. Excellent benefits. With the ailing family to support, Evie Sage's employment status isn't just important, it's vital. And when a mishap with Rendon's most infamous villain results in a job offer, naturally she says yes. No job is perfect of course, but even less so when you develop a crush on your terrifying, temperamental, and undeniably hot boss. This one is kind of romance humor centered, but it's more like a rom-com. I don't think there's any spice in here or it's very minimal from what I've heard, but I've heard it's very funny and cute and it sounds like the perfect book for for the readathon. Next reading challenge is a purple and black book. I'm cheating a tiny bit with this one because I chose another special edition and that is Only a Monster by Vanessa Lynn. So it's normally red and black but mine's purple and black so I'm gonna count it and it's got these cool purple edges. I think this is the bookish box edition. It's super cool. It's got a reverse dust jacket and I've been wanting to start this series as well. I think 
think it's going to be a trilogy, but there's only two out right now. So it should have been the perfect summer sent to stay with her late mother's eccentric family in London. 16 year old Joan is determined to enjoy herself. She loves her nerdy job at the historic Holland house. And when her super cute coworker, Nick asks her on a date, it feels like everything is falling into place. Then a good Samaritan attempt gone wrong sends Joan spinning through time and her life quickly begins to unravel. Her family isn't just eccentric, they're monsters with terrifying hidden powers. And Nick isn't just a cute boy, he's a legendary monster slayer who will do anything to bring them down. So her entire family is monsters, so I felt like that count for the villain category and of course a beautiful purple and black cover. And the last reading challenge for the villains is a villain short story. So for that one I chose The Odd Sisters. This is part of a huge villain series by Serena Valentino. They're all retelling slash backstories on Disney villains. It is a series that connects together. This is book number five or six, which is what I'm on next in the series. There's like 12 books. They're all really short, but this one's exceptionally short. So it's only 260 pages and it's less than five hours on audiobook. I think there's quite a few illustrations in here, so it's shorter than it seems. I'm not entirely sure what this is a backstory on because we've already done one on the Evil Queen from Snow White, which is the first one in the series. So if you wanna check out this series, make sure you go in order. There are characters that tie in throughout the entire book. It is a full series. Even though they follow different Disney tales, they do heavily tie together. So recommend starting with that. I'm gonna to attempt to get to this one for the readathon. All right, I know that seems like a ton of books, but I do almost all of my books on audio. I will be doing all of these on audiobook except for the graphic novel. I'll choose something else to physically read. A couple of these are very large. I'm gonna do my best to get to them, but it'll be okay if I don't make it through all of these books. But like I said, I do almost all of them on audio. I do listen while I clean, drive, sometimes when I'm working. So I'm able to listen to quite a bit and I listen at a faster speed. So I'm usually able to get through a large amount of books. That's personally what I find enjoyable. You do not have to do this to participate. You can combine all the reading challenges if you want to, you can skip them entirely. You can find a vampire book that's set in a castle and a short story with a vampire on the cover and count one book if you want to. You don't have to do any of the reading challenges. Everybody's lifestyles and abilities are different, so whatever works for you is great. As long as you read one book for the readathon, you are a success. The goal of my readathons is always to kind of just immerse yourself in whatever theme we're doing. I will be vlogging the two weeks, so I have different vampire and villain themed activities that we're going to be doing, and I'll be filming them for the reading vlog. There are fun movies we can watch. I have food I'm gonna make, all kinds of fun stuff. Make sure to check out my Spotify music playlist for Not So scary -thon. And then I have a separate playlist for Vampires vs. Villains that's a little bit smaller and more themed towards the readathon. This is just music that you can listen to just throughout the day to kind of get you in the mood. I have some villains and vampires linked ambiances that you can put on in the background while you're physically reading if you want to. Also to kind of set the mood. Make sure you're following me on Instagram at the Bright Side Girl as I do stuff daily on there for the readathon. So we have Instagram photo challenges for vampires and for villains for the full two weeks. These are partially to get you entered into the giveaway. I have a US only themed giveaway on Instagram and every time you do a photo challenge you will get entered into the giveaway. I have one or two stipulations on this so make sure you check out that full announcement video. I will be doing two posts every day, one for vampires, one for villains, to participate with you guys. This is a great way to also just make friends, interact with each other. Again, you don't have to do any of these if you don't want to. I do personally like to take a lot of my photos in advance so that I don't feel like I'm rushing to kind of figure out what to take a photo of and you can schedule things on Instagram so this kind of helps. It's a good way to just kind of be creative, make some friends and interact with everybody. You can make it as easy or as complicated as you want. I will share everybody's posts daily on my Instagram stories. Make sure you are tagging me in your photos. If you see that I have not shared your photo in my stories within a couple hours then just send me a DM and let me know because that means I didn't see it. If I didn't share your photo within a couple hours after you posted it, I probably didn't see it. So just let me know because otherwise you won't get entered into the giveaway. Make sure to check out my description as well for all the links to download the graphics, the playlist, the ambiance, all of that stuff. All the information will be down below in the description of this video. And most importantly, the goal is just to kind of have fun, treat it like our own little holiday, and hopefully read some fabulous books. So I'm really excited to get started with you guys very, very soon. We are just over a week away. Let me know if you are going to read any of the books that I have on this TBR video as well. And I will see you guys next time on the bright side.